Hey everybody, um, welcome to another volume of my shitty old reviews. Uh, if you don't know what these are, I've been doing these for uh, a little while now. I, they are reviews that I used to host over on Frickin' Freck Films under the name Super Hyper Turbo Gamers, uh, where I first started doing video game content. Uh, all those were removed from that channel whenever I started Turbo Zone back in 2015 but here recently in the recent months i have been re-uploading these old reviews under these collections um they're terrible i don't like them uh but some of you seem to get a kick out of watching my old reviews and you may even learn something or you can just point and laugh that's what i'm doing pointing and laughing at myself merry christmas um i don't know if i'll be posting too much else during december uh you know it's a busy time spend time with family on top of that you know we already already do stuff with the button mappers for uh this time of year so it's a little challenging to work on my own content uh plus i just did a whole month of reviews that was a thing uh, so enjoy this volume guys volume four i believe and uh grab some popcorn get ready to cringe here we go super hyper turbo gamers Hey geeks and gamers, um, so I was just, I was looking for something to review, I was looking around to see what, what footage I had on my laptop that I've gotten from the past few months on my free time, and I found Vector Man! Hey, it's Vector Man! I, f I forgot I had this footage, I meant to review this uh, a few months back, so here you go, Vector Man on the Sega Genesis. Now, as a lot of you know, if you watch my stuff, the Sega Genesis is my favorite console of all time. Blah, blah, blah. I love Sega. This is a really good game on the console, and it's really unique. Uh, the story is that uh, Earth is covered in trash, uh, the humans have left, and this robot, I think his name is Raster. Ra Raster. Raster is is like head of the robots that clean up the Earth, but like somehow he turns evil. So Vector Man must now go through this this dirty, horrible looking earth and destroy Raster to save Earth. I don't know. It's some some plot. It is it's it's pretty much Wally with uh with laser guns, I guess. <laughs> or or and uh, more advanced looking robots, I guess. So it's pretty unique. Um, now the first thing you'll notice is that, is that this game looks beautiful. Because uh, he uses 3D rendered uh, graphics, and if you know anything anything about 3D rendered graphics, is that the game that people always go to whenever they mention that is Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. And as you guys probably know, also I love Donkey Kong Country, but everybody says this game is like Sega's answer to DK Country, and I don't. I, I don't see how that is, because DK Country had like more vibrant and more, I guess, lifelike environments, and this game has kind of like cold and empty environments. So I don't know. It's just I don't I, I don't think that connection works uh, uh, stylistically. So you know, just because a game has 3D rendered graphics doesn't mean it's you know it, it's trying to copy the the most popular game with 3D rendered graphics. I'm just I'm just putting that out there. Now the game itself controls amazingly. The game, um, while I'm not really that good at it, I'm, I'm going to admit it. I suck at this game. This game is hard as balls, but it plays about like if you mix Mega Man with something like Contra or Metal Slug, uh, it controls about like that uh, to where it it you know it's a platformer where you jump in and you hop into stuff, but it, but you have all around range with your uh, laser gun 
and you can get power-ups like the spread and stuff like that. So yeah, it's pretty much Mega Man and Contra mixed together, and it works really, really well. Uh, it's just, and it has great sound design. The music in this game, oh, uh, as you're playing it, uh, sounds amazing. It just really gets you into the the whole feeling of the game, and. Uh, I don't know, it just, th this game's really, really good. The only reason I don't hold it that high in, like, the library of Genesis games is honestly because I'm not good at it. Um, I have this game, like, 40 times. I have this game on cartridge, which is what you're seeing now. And then I have it on, like, 40 different collections, because Sega likes to put this game out there. And I even have the sequel. So, you know, so sometime I'll get around to doing the sequel. It's just... I don't know, I just kind of wanted to talk about this game, because it's kind of unique, in a way, in a, in a sense, so, I don't know, I, I would say definitely check it out, uh, just buy the Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection for the PS3 or Xbox 360, and you'll, you'll have this game plus many others, um, and this is, uh, Vector Man is one of the, I guess, uh, underutilized, forgotten Sega characters that exist, that, uh, I mean, he's, he, he's really cool. I mean, honestly, uh, they were going to reboot him a while back and, like, turn into an FPS, and people were like, no, no, that ruins it. But, you know, I thought that would be kind of cool. Because, honestly, Vector Man could fit in in today's gaming world. Because, I mean, look at his environments. They're kind of, they're, they're kind of, like, drab and cold and lifeless. But they're also unique, and they're also, uh, very well designed. It's just... That, coupled with the music, makes the world just feel a kind of empty and hollow, but something you want to explore and something you want to see more of. It's just, it's just really, really awesome. So yeah, th those are my thoughts on Vector Man. Is there anything wrong with the game? Not that I can see. Um, I mean, I'm bad at it. So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's too hard because challenge is totally fun in the game. I, I love challenge in, in any type of game, even ones I'm not good at. So, you know, that's not a downfall. Uh, I'm trying to think of what a downfall would be. Maybe the fact that it, it doesn't save, but even that uh, a lot of Genesis games didn't save your progress. So that's just a, a stupid nitpick that I probably shouldn't have even brought up in the first place. Um... I don't know. Ve Vector Man's cool. This game is really cool. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I just I just thought I should get you give you guys some cool Vector Man ness, a cool Vector Man review. Um, even though now it kind of makes me want to watch Wally -E or any Pixar movie or Up. I like Up. You know what? I actually do have one problem with this game. The enemies, the enemies aren't that unique. That's probably my only f uh, thing that, that's not even a big problem, it's just that they reuse a lot of enemies, but oh well, that's that, that that's not a big deal. Uh, the game still looks, feels, plays, it, it's just great. I mean, look at that waterfall, it looks amazing. Oh, I, I wanna go sit in that waterfall and take a little, take a little shower. <laughs> oh well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, enjoyed this review. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys in whatever I do next. Granted, I don't know what that'll be. So, I'll see you guys later. Bye. Sega! Hey, Geeks and Gamers. Uh, welcome back to Sega Sunday, where I review a game for an old Sega console or a Sega branded game. Today, I'm going to play a game that I just picked up for the Genesis that I thought looked looked interesting from the box, but I'm not really sure. Oh god, what's going on? What is that? What is What is What is Oh my Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, wait a second. Did that Zoom in on that. Did that really say what I thought it said? Balls, 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 balls. Yep. 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 Welcome to Balls 3D, fighting at its ballsiest. This is what this game is. And I am I am terrified of what's about to happen. Just uh, just listen to this awesome menu music right here. Wow, 
what catchy menu music that was. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this has to be one of the worst games I own ever. Like, like next to Sonic 06, next to E.T., Balls 3D is... <laughs> it's a terrible game. And it's even scarier because it's all... look. It's supposed to look like a 3D, but they're all balls, and it's supposed to be a fighting game, but... Let, let me tell you this. If you go into this game, say you pick it up at like a store like I did. I, bought, I think I pay like a dollar. And you go and you go to play this game and you expect to actually learn how to fight things. Ha ha ha! Because you just kind of push buttons and things just kind of happen to you for no apparent reason. And it's really, really scary. Like, honestly, it's very, very, very scary to play this game. This game is like being stuck in a fever dream. Um, just, just look at this. Just look at what's going on. Also, if it seems like some of the footage looks very similar, it's because I only played one round of this game. That's 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 as much as my brain can handle. Um, I played as the one character, the the blue guy Turbo, which uh, I mean, from what I could tell, I mean I can't really tell what kind of fighter he's supposed to be. He's just a blue guy, and I beat up the other guys, and it's just. It's supposed to feel 3D, but it feels 2D, and there's no there's no I can't correlate the buttons with moves I don't I can't tell what they're supposed to do or what they're meant to do and accolade did a terrible job oh gosh <laughs> like literally playing this game for too long gives me a headache like like actually gives me a headache and whatever your game gives somebody a headache it's it's kind of sad plus the name itself is terrible balls 3d Wow Balls 3D. You have to have some to actually call your game that. Call it Balls 3D. I mean, what was this trying to? What, what was this trying to be? What was this game trying to be? This game eludes me. Also, I just don't pick this game up. Don't buy this game. Um, the most I would say is maybe if you saw it for like a quarter, give it a go one time, and then put it on your shelf. But don't go out and hunt for this game, because it is something else. It's by Accolade. If you know Accolade, they made Bubsy the Bobcat. That should tell you enough about Accolade. Don't don't bother with it. <laughs> don't bother with this game. At all. <laughs> this isn't like Rocket Knight where it's some underrated gem. This is this is just bad. I mean look, I'm fighting! Is that a flamingo? Is it a boss flamingo? That's the only character I can actually tell what it's supposed to be, is that balls flamingo right there. That's pretty sad. I mean, everything just looks terrible, and the background look terrible, and... Uh, uh, so bad. And, like, I'm, it sucks, because I, like, I don't like reviewing bad games. Like, if you watch my show a lot, I, I try to usually do something that I enjoy. But sometimes you just find a game like this where you just kind of have to, like, you just have to talk about it somewhere. You have to show it. Like, I don't even, like, I don't even have much to say. I, I think the, the footage alone is showing you what I mean. But, I mean, it's just not much to say about this game. I mean, period. It's bad. It's really bad. It's a Genesis game you should never pick up, you should always skip, unless you're really interested, or unless you want to review it for some odd reason, like you're me, like you're a masochist. But that Geeks Gamers was my review of Balls 3D. I hope it was terrible. I'll see you guys in the next Sega Sunday episode, where I'll do something that I actually enjoy. Goodbye. Hey Geeks and Gamers. Um, today let's talk about something that's different. Now, we all went, went through that period in our life where we didn't really know what our identity was, and we didn't really know who we were, and that's what Microsoft went through whenever they first released their original Xbox. They weren't really sure who they were, and they weren't really sure what they do, so they were trying a whole bunch of different things, and one of their attempts was to create a 3D platformer mascot similar to Mario, similar to Crash, similar to Sonic, that could carry their brand, and uh, this was their their very strange, very interesting attempt. Uh, Blinks the Time Sweeper. Blinks the Time Sweeper was a game that got a lot of hype. Now this is the time before Master Chief, you know, was like the face of you know Microsoft. This was a time whenever Microsoft 
was still trying a di bunch of different things with their uh, you know original Xbox console, and that's part of the reason why it's a great console because you could find a ton of unique games on the system. And uh, it's Bleaks was just one of many games to just try to you know make a name you know because you know Microsoft didn't have any like big branding uh, Microsoft didn't have a lot going for them you know they just started all they really had were like Xbox Live and uh, I've, that's probably about it but here's Blink's Time Sweeper Blink's Time Sweeper is about cats well one cat in particular Blink's but these cats are time sweepers. They go to different dimensions. They protect them and whatnot. And uh, one day, one dimension was taken over by the evil Tom Tom gang, which are a gang of pigs, and a princess was captured. Now, uh, Blinks, after seeing the princess, decides to go into this doomed dimension and uh, save the princess. Now, now the dimension, all the people were turned into uh, time stones. And all the time stones have turned it. Well, a lot of the time stones have turned into monsters. So that's where our journey begins. Blinks is a very interesting game too. Uh, the character himself, I think the character has great design and has great appeal, and could have been a really great mascot uh, if given a little more focus. I guess I don't know if given a little more spit shine. Um, the, the gameplay itself is your basic 3D platformer and you have to go through each each level. There's three levels per world in a boss fight. You, you have to go through each level and defeat a certain number of monsters. Now, um, th that's displayed in your top right corner. And uh, you do this by using your vacuum. Your vacuum can pick up heavy objects and f f uh, fling it back at monsters and also use it by, uh, uh, I use time stones. Now, if you get three or more time stones in a row, you get uh, a time ability uh, displayed down at the bottom. Things like pausing time, things like rewinding time, slowing time down, recording, uh, get, even things like getting a retry for your health. It's, um, it's all time-based and it adds a different puzzle element to where you don't want to go around just haphazardly collecting these collectibles. You want to make sure you get three or more of the same ones that you need in a row or you're going to mess up in that level. So it has it has a bit of strategy to it, but with that comes a few problems that I'll get into uh, uh, here in a bit. And the game looks great. The design looks very unique. It, it just looks like blinks, you know. No, no other game has this kind of like I guess the design you know that I've seen uh, especially in, in like a 3d platformer and um, it it looks really great uh, it just and it sounds good the music in the game is great music and uh, overall I think the game is just really great and unique but there are a few problems the first problem uh, comes in the play with the time stones like I was talking about uh, where you have to match up three or more time stones, if you accidentally do it incorrectly, like see, like see you accidentally land or something on a time stone that you didn't want, and it messes up your whole thing. If you need that certain time ability for where you're at, you're going to have to backtrack. You're going to have to backtrack and hunt and hope you can find the time stones that that you need, and that's a problem. But it's not a big problem. It's just a problem, you know. It's something that like might accidentally happen to you, so you want to watch out for that. Um, another problem, this one is minor, but I felt Blinks just just walks and runs very, very just so slow, especially for a cat. He's just he's a very slow moving character to me, uh, you know, compared to most three D platformers. And I. I, I, I don't know why that is, uh, I mean, I, I don't know, <laughs> I felt like if they sped him up a little bit, it would have been alright, and also, the camera angles lead to a lot of uh, cheap deaths, uh, where you didn't see an enemy, or you couldn't see where you were, and the enemy hits you, 
and you have to lose a retry. I, I felt like the camera was something that, that needed some work, but it was their first attempt, and it was a pretty good one overall. I, I think the game ha has great appeal, and the game uh, plays great, and could have been something great, you know, given a little more... I get, yeah, like I said, given a little more spit shine, the game could have been something fantastic, but in the state that the game is in right now, and the way it was released, I, I, I think it's a great game. I played this game a lot whenever it first came out, and, uh, in fact, it was one of the first Xbox games I ever bought, so it was, it was really something that I, I, I got attached to, and I still think that this could have been, uh, a lot better than it is, but that everybody was Blinks the Time Sleeper, and sadly, the company Artoon, who made it, uh, they made a sequel, but now they're out of business, so while Microsoft owns the IP, I, I doubt we'll ever see a third Blinks game in the series. But if you like you very unique platformers, definitely check this one out. Well, the Geeks and Gamers, I'll see you guys in my next video. Hey Geeks and Gamers, welcome to the one year anniversary of this show. Uh, Super Hyper Thermal Gamers uh, was started one year ago by me and David. And uh, our, our review was posted this day, well our first review was posted this day last year. So this is kind of a special thing. So uh, happy anniversary show. Um, I'm doing a game today that that means a lot to me. It's one of my favorite uh, games of all time. It's up there uh, on my top 10 favorite games list. It's No More Heroes for the Wii. No More Heroes is a game uh, that came out towards the beginning of the Wii's lifetime, and uh, it it serves to prove that the Wii wasn't just a kid console. The Wii was something uh, something special, something more, and uh, it really contributes to what makes me like the Wii a whole lot. Because people always always ask me, you know, why why do I play Wii? Why is you know why am I such you know such so such a big Wii fanboy, and uh, the the answer is because of unique games like this, like No More Heroes. No More Heroes is about Travis Touchdown, a young nerdy uh, and impressionable assassin. Uh, Travis is kind of like a mockery of like I guess uh, you would say badass characters and stuff. He's kind of like that. He, like he takes those 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 badass characters and tries to mock them. He's a nerd who watches anime and he's trying to act like he's cool but he's he's he, he really comes off as uh, kind of kind of forced and lame and that's why he's so cool is because he's He's a parody of those kind of characters. Travis uh, Touchdown is based off of characters, uh, well, I, I mean people. Uh, he's based off of Johnny Knoxville for his design, and he's a very cool guy. He wields a beam katana that he bought online, which is a parody of a, of a lightsaber. And uh, the, the story is, is that Travis is a young assassin who, uh, who one day gets a job to take out a drifter, and the drifter is rank 11 in this uh, top like 10 ranking fight for like the top 10 assassins it's a convoluted story but so Travis is stuck in this in this top 10 rankings now and he must fight his way to the top of the rankings um, or you know that's just what he wants to do so he wants to be number one and also if he gets through to the top of the rankings his his manager uh, Sylvia Crystal will um well, she'll she'll uh turning back. Okay, how about this? If I become number one, will you do it with me? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe not. Come on, just once. So that that's the plot of the game. Um 
it's pretty cool. Uh, so, a Sylvia Crystal, who I think is based off Scarlett Johansson. I'm not pretty. I'm pretty sure that was right. Um, she is a French uh, businesswoman who uh, kind of manages you and helps you get through each each ranking fight. And that's the whole thing. You're you're going from ranking fight to ranking fight, climbing your way up the ladder. And uh, the higher Travis gets on the on the rankings, the crazier and the better the story gets. It's just. It's just a great game. Fuckhead! Yo, help me out here. Where's this death metal dude? Bad answer. It's game time. The gameplay is very, very simple too. The gameplay, uh, kind of, it's uh, you know, it's on Wii, so you'd think it'd be like a whole lot of swiping and swinging, but it's really not. Uh, you use your the uh, the Moten nunchuck. You use the A button to slash, and you use the B button to do grapples. And then you lock on with Z, and you move with uh, the stick, and that's really it. And then whenever you're slashing, and the and you get a uh, the health down on an enemy, you get this little arrow, and you uh, swing your moat that way, and it decaps them or whatever. Like uh, you know, it it'll finish them. So it's a very fun, very fluent, and addictive gameplay. That uh, if you uh, get to where, uh, well, if you get to on a level that I'm on, um, I mean, with like gameplay, you you just get so good. You're just you're just cutting through enemies like butter. It's incredible. And like me here, uh, the game's pretty challenging, but I've played through this game like I I say at least at least uh, ten or eleven times. So I already. I, I have everything that uh, you need to be like the the best possible in this game. So um, it looks easier on the screen here whenever I'm playing it, but it's actually a pretty challenging game. Extraordinary! The moment I've been waiting for. The name Holy Sword is now yours. And, and this game has a unique and stylized world. It looks great. Um, I really enjoy the way this game is is presented and the crazy world and the over the topness. It's a big. The whole game's just a big anime parody and a big comic book parody, and it's just a great game to uh, play and just have a good time. Uh, it's a little. It's a little hard to explain or get into if you're trying to get somebody else into it. It's. Uh, it's a very like like bizarre game but if you like beat em up slash em up type games it's it's worth checking out the only downside uh, to this game is that um which they fix this in the sequel um travis has to ride around the city on this big motorbike and it, it feels a little clunky and to get money to to enter each ranking fight he has to do odd jobs like mowing yards and stuff and that's uh it gets a little monotonous, but it's not that bad. Now, this game is made by my favorite uh, game producer, game creator, I don't know if what you would call him, but uh, Suda51. Suda51 is a very interesting guy because he makes the most unique, weird games. Like he made uh, Wild Hawk Chainsaw, and he made, uh, I think, Killer is Dead, uh, and he made Killer7, and Shadows of the Damned, and he made both of the Normal Heroes games. And this is the first game I ever played of his, and it's it's something that's uh, near and dear to my heart. I, I, I really love this game. It, it was one of my first Wii pickups that I ever got, and uh, it's just, it's worth finding. Uh, if you have a PS3, they did port it 
two PS3 called No More, it, well, and it's called No More Heroes, uh, Heroes Paradise, and it, and it looks better as an HD, and it has more content, and uh, if you have the move, it'll work with the move, and if you have the controller, it'll work with the controller. Maybe one day we'll look at that version, um, but I wanted to review the original version of the game, because I, I have both versions, so, but No More Heroes, it's a great game. With, with a lot of personality style and a great story to boot. Uh, the gameplay is simple but fun. Uh, you can pick up and play. The game is, I wouldn't say it's that long. I would say the, at most it's about 14-15 uh, hours and at least it's about 7 or 8 hours. It's, it just depends on how good you are and how much you want to do. Uh, there's a lot to do, a lot to explore, and a lot to play around with. That was quite a move. I'll admit you've got potential. If Challenge had a taste, you'd be quite delicious. Fight for the seventh? Yeah, sure. Bring it on! No More Heroes is an awesome game, and Travis Touchdown is an awesome character. And I honestly think Travis Touchdown should be in Smash Bros. Uh, Suda51 has asked for him to be in Smash Bros. like tons of times, and I agree. Travis Touchdown would be a cool Smash Bros. character. Uh, they would just have to tone down his uh, his foul language a bit. But, there you go. That was my review of No More Heroes. Uh, happy anniversary to the show. Um, I hope you guys are liking everything. I hope you like that playtime thing me and Damon have started doing. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Hey Geeks and Gamers, um, I'm doing a review today, first time doing this, of a handheld game console. Uh, if you don't like when I do these like up close and personal reviews, uh, don't worry, I'm, I'm going to put out a video game review right after this video, so you can look and see what I posted, and you can watch that. Whatever I decided to, uh, to review, that's more of my traditional stuff, is just reviewing games. But I'm going on a trip soon. And I'm going to take this console with me. I decided I would review this bad boy. The Ad Games Sega Genesis Ultimate Game Player thing. I thought I would review it and uh, see how it stacks up. So, Geeks and Gamers, this is the Ad Games Sega Genesis Ultimate Portable Game Player. As you can see by all this fun stuff on the back. You can look it up and see for yourself what it is, but this is what it is, and you can see me in the camera there. Hey there. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, this is the Sega Genesis A Games Ultimate Game Player thing. Uh, I got this for Christmas one year from my mom because she knows how much I love Sega Genesis. That's my phone going off. I'm sorry, because she knows how much I love Sega Genesis. So she got this for me one year. Uh, and I decided, because uh, I'm going on a trip in a few days, I decided instead of looking around my 3DS, my big old chunky 3DS and, you know, taking this around with me and taking all my games and stuff, I was just going to pack a light and take this one console with me to play while I travel. Because... While it's not the greatest thing in the world, it does play a lot of cool Sega games. See what At Games is. At Games is a company who makes I guess not really reproduction but like retro style consoles in a sense. Like they have a home like Sega Genesis that is considered to be the Model 4 and it has games built in and you can play cartridges and I think they also do Atari and ColecoVision uh, and pro possibly Intellivision but here's another one of their Genesis products, and uh, if you see from the front, little, it, it looks like your standard game uh, handheld console. It's got a uh, D-pad over here. D-pad's not really the greatest. It's, it's kind of mushy. It's kind of black. It feels kind of like a Saturn 
pad. I don't really care about it that much. I, I wish it was uh, m more like the actual uh, Genesis pad. Here we have some really good six button uh, stuff here going on. And it, it it's, it's serviceable. It doesn't hinder the experience that much, but playing games on this thing like uh, playing, I know I've tried to play Duke Nukem 3D and that was kind of hard. And uh, I think playing something like a 3D beat em up was kind of hard because you know, it kind of just mushes around and you kind of going up and down whenever you don't mean to go up and down. So that's not the greatest, but it's still a pretty cool little setup here. It feels like a Genesis controller for the most part. Uh, you have a start button right there and you have a menu button. I'll show you what that's for in a second, as you can probably guess. Up top here, we have a volume control. We have an SD card slot, which is pretty cool. I have an SD card uh, loaded in there. I actually have a mini SD card in a little uh, a little adapter uh, loaded in there. And then we have a charger and whatnot up here for all that fun stuff for charging the the, the device. That's actually for a TV output, so you can play this thing on your TV. So that's kind of cool. They, they can act as a genesis for your TV. And on the bottom, we have the power switch and we have a headphone jack. And the batteries are rechargeable, so that's pretty much it for the console itself. So let's look at the, the inside here. Let's, let's turn this baby on. Start up at games. And it starts up with the screen. This is the menu. It's a nine screen layout. And it starts off with the uh, the Sega games that come preloaded uh, already uh, in alphabetical order for you. You got like Alex Kidd, Alien Storm, all the you know columns. You got Comic Zone. You have uh, Echo. You know whatever. You know Fatal Labyrinth. Uh, you know Golden Axe games. Uh, Rise Star. Sonic games. As uh, it is missing Sonic Three, that's kind of a big part. But you can kind of fix that. I'll show you how you can. You know like you can kind of fix that problem, but uh, the games that it comes preloaded uh, pre with uh, are pretty good classic Sega Genesis games that are published by Sega themselves. Um, it's a nice library to start with, it's a nice little uh, bit to get you going. And then if you go beyond this screen, you have these games. These games are bad. These games are the games, I, I don't know if they're made by at games, but the games that come preloaded on here that are just stock flash like games that are actually not very good. I haven't found one on here that I, that I like to play, uh, except for Jax P. You gotta play Jax P, you know. But I haven't found one on here that I actually care about. But um, I, I, I guess it's nice they include them, but you're not buying this to play these games. You're buying this to play Sega Genesis games. And then on the last screen here is the SD card. You can select the SD card and check this out. Select. Ta-da! Here's all my games that I have installed, or the ROMs that I have installed on the SD card. This is where I think it's really cool. This is where this device gets really, really, really cool. Because I can install games like I have Castle of Illusion and, and Castlevania Bloodlines, and I have Wonder Boy 4, and, you know, Gunstar Heroes, you know, Splatterhouse. I have all kinds of fun games on here. And so, look, they're Sonic 3 and Knuckles, see? You can kind of fix the problem yourself. And there's all kinds of cool games. Getting the games on the SD card to play on here is a pretty easy process. You just gotta get the ROM and unzip it and put the file in the SD card and make a file for it. it, it it's all explained in the boxes manual for this thing, which I actually lost the manual that I had, or in the box that I had for this, but uh, I remember reading it in there because I learned how to do it. And um, I will say this, not every game that I tried worked. I know uh, games like, uh, just bigger games, like uh, Mega Man Wily Wars would not work for, uh, on this thing, and uh, I know that uh, Shining Force and some of the Fantasy Star games would not work, but for the most part everything is pretty well playable, and like a few of these games in here which I'll show you don't work really well, like, like I know Lion King and Turrican kind of glitch out, but uh, yeah, it's that's kind of the layout, and uh, as for the downside of that, the games that come pre-installed are pretty good uh, Sega Genesis games, but that doesn't matter because you can kind of add whatever you want for the most part to this thing and play it. So let's actually show some gameplay. Let's uh, get an example of 
of, of playing a game. Let's go back to the main menu here. And we'll play, uh... Uh, what's a good... Well, what will we play? Let's play... Uh, let's just play Right Star. Sure, I like Right Star. So it starts up... And you can immediately... See what the first problem is here. The sound quality on this thing is terrible. Now, that doesn't matter for the most part, because you, you know, you're gonna be taken everywhere and you probably wanna have the sound up. But if you wanna play the earbuds and actually hear the games, they don't really sound that well. They kind of sound off key. And that's kind of a problem. The the screen itself is actually pretty good. Uh it is a pretty good job. Here, start the game. It is a pretty good job, but the sound is just atrocious. But, oh well, let's get it started, let's show you some gameplay, and I'll go through a few games and show you uh, what they look like on this thing. So yeah, as you can see, it's all right. Uh, like I said, the the D-pad is a little wonky at times, and the sound quality isn't that great. You can also knock it because you can't really save a lot of the games. Uh, that kind of sucks, especially since it uses an SD card. It can easily, you know, they could have worked it in there somehow. But at, overall, it's a cool little thing to have. I think this thing's pretty cheap. I think it goes for about. Uh, maybe a hundred dollars, maybe fifty dollars, somewhere in that price range, somewhere in the middle ground there, maybe. Uh, once again, I got it as a gift, but it's a pretty cool little device. Uh, if you love Sega Genesis, this is nothing compared to the actual charm of playing an actual Sega Genesis. But for travel and for having a tons of just amazing like like games just at the palm of your hands on the go, this is not a bad choice. I would not say skip this. This is not a piece of junk. It's just not the greatest thing in the market. It is, you you pay for what you get, to be completely honest, and I like it. So, uh, that was my review. Uh, you take from that what you will, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey geeks and gamers, welcome to my review of Sonic Shuffle for the Dreamcast. A good party game 
it shouldn't be that hard. Uh, all you need is a colorful cast, uh, a, a fun premise, and some really great mini games. And uh, the the fun should just come from that. The you shouldn't need a whole lot to make a really great party game. Examples: Mario Party, Crash Bash, a Ape Escape, Pumped and Primed, Pac-Man Party. All great party games that aren't that hard to get into. Uh, you, you don't need this grand premise for a party game. Sadly, Sonic Shuffle didn't get the memo. Here, here's a party game that's really not that great. It's really, really not that great. Uh, it seemed like whenever uh, Sonic heard that he was going to get his own party game, uh, well, he sure did bring the game. This is a game, but I think he forgot his party at home. Because it's not a it's not a very lively party. It's more like a like a board meeting. This is Sonic Shovel. Now this game is actually a collaboration b between uh, Sonic Team and Hudson. So surprisingly, so Sonic Team and Hudson both worked on this game, but Hudson's never credited. In fact, I had to look up to see if Hudson even worked on this because I was like. I was unsure of myself because I I thought they did, and uh, turns out yeah they did, but they're not credited like at all on the game or in the booklet with the game or on the cover or on the back. I I couldn't find their name anywhere, so apparently Hudson just just didn't want any part of this. Uh, so you know, I guess Sonic Team and Sega, you got all the credit. That's not a good thing. <laughs> Now, the game's laid out like your basic Mario Party, with a board and spaces that you, for characters that you move around. But that's kind of where it stops. That's kind of where it stops. Um, you have to get these precious stones on each level, which are kind of like the stars in Mario. But you have to battle weird creatures that look like Pokemon rejects. You battle them in a game of war with cards to get them, and you move spaces uh you determine the spaces that, that you move by using cards that are displayed on your vmu and you just you have to go around and uh, this game like i don't even fully understand it to be honest this, this this game i don't even fully understand itself that i i get what i'm supposed to be doing but all the other random crap that happens are just kind of it just kind of happens. Now there are some good elements here. There are some really fun mini games, and honestly, I think the mini games are where Hudson did all the work because they feel like Mario Party-esque mini games, but with Sonic. And you know, th th that's a great part. But you have to chug through all this other crap to get through it. This this other board game crap that you know isn't very good. It's not like a Mario Party where you roll a die, move a couple steps, maybe something weird happens, but usually you're safe and you move on. You know, it's not like that. It's not like that at all. It's it's so boring, and every four turns doesn't mean a mini game. Uh, the only time you get mini games, are is you are if you land on a mini game spot, and that's all right. It's just uh, there's not really a whole lot of times that I find that happening. Most of the times, the weird card battles pop up, and you gotta watch somebody battle a Pokemon reject. And that's this boring. And battling in yourself sucks too. I, I didn't like it at all. Um, and the board layout is just everywhere. You know, the, there's no coherent layout of the boards. And it's, I mean, the the I, I guess the music's all right and the game looks all right for a Dreamcast title. It's just, uh, you know, whenever you say a Sonic Party game kind of expecting something fast and fun, you know, it's Sonic, but this is kind of the opposite of Sonic. This is outside of the fun mini games that you're seeing. It's it's really bore uh, slow and boring and not worth your time at all. Like really. I only own this cuz I got it uh, as a Christmas present one year from a friend. So that was neat, but you know what? This is honestly probably like the third time I've ever played it, and that's 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 sad among itself. <sighs> I don't know. 
You know, and the, and the worst part is, is that if you played Sonic and the Secret Rings, there's a party mode on Sonic and the Secret Rings, and it's actually pretty fun. It's actually a pretty fun party mode. So it kind of comes, you know, it kind of goes to show that, you know, they could have made a good Sonic party game if they really wanted to, but instead they try to make it extreme with all these different rules and stuff you gotta do and it's wacky layout because you know Sonic's always trying to push to be I guess more extreme and cooler than Mario and I guess what's cooler than having a fun party game is having a very confusing and boring party game to be honest this game isn't very good this, this is one of the few times outside of, of, of Sonic 06 whenever I play a Sonic game and I, I, I agree it's just it's just pretty terrible Sonic S Sonic Shuffle was a pretty terrible game. Um, once again, the mini games are the best part of the whole thing. The mini games. Um, Sonic Shuffle, everybody. If you're bored, that's what the game's like. If I sound bored, that's what the game's like. Everybody, this is what the game's like pretty incredible that this actually got the market in the state that it's in. I mean, say, you know, party games meant to play with the whole, you know, a whole group of friends or a whole family. By the way, fish on skis or uh, skates, but, you know, it's meant to play with a big group of people or like, like a family. So what if like some kid or, or like some family was like, oh, we love Sonic, you know, we love Sega. So they pick up the Dreamcast and one of the games that they got was Sonic Shovel and they sit down and try to play this thing. I would feel so bad for them because they wasted their money because you're not going to understand what's going on. I barely understand what's going on and I've, I've had this game for a while. So, you know, I, I feel bad for any families that, that actually tried to sit down and do this because then they regret even buying a Dreamcast whenever they could have just bought a U64 and a copy of Mario Party 2. Also, there's like four characters that you can play as Sonic, Knuckles, Tails, and Amy. But there are unlockable characters. But guess what? I haven't unlocked them. Because you have to play the story mode. Yes, there's a story. Don't ask me what it is. I don't, I don't fucking know. I don't know what the story is at all. But there is a story mode. And you have to play the story mode to unlock the other characters that. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> uh, this game. And there's these stones you can use, kind of like items in Mario Party, but they just they just do things like switch a card for another card, which you can already use a card from another person's deck for some reason. Yeah, you can steal cards from your other people's deck, but you can see your card on your VMU, but you can't see their cards, and... You could steal your the stones from other people because thievery is fun, and uh, there's these weird fairy characters that are computerized. Look, I don't know, and uh, uh, oh, Sonic Shuffle. This game might break me. This game might honestly break me. And honestly, I made this review too long. <laughs> I'm torturing myself. Uh, but that's what the game's like. But that's what the game's like. So honestly, um, if this looks interesting to you, don't trust it. Don't pl play it. Don't buy it. Because, I mean, the game didn't look that bad to me until I picked it up and tried to try to play the thing. And, I'm, as, uh, and you know, this is kind of what this whole review's about, is just not playing this game ever at all. Because you don't want to, you, you don't want to, trust me, you don't want to go through this experience. If you're a Sonic fan like me, it might be cool to own it. It might be cool to have it, but don't pick this game up with the one to you know, actually play as a party game. There's tons of other party games out there. But that, Geeks and Gamers, was my sad, sad review of Sonic Shuffle. I'm sorry. I am so sorry, everybody. I love you. I am so sorry. Bye. Hey Geeks and Gamers, today I'm going to review a game called Black. Black is a game from 2006, made by Criterion Games, 
and published by EA. It is a first-person shooter. Uh, it is for the PS2 and Xbox, I, I, I know. It might be for more consoles. I have the PS2 version here. Let's get going. Now, Black is a military shooter. Uh, in the rawest sense of the word, uh, it does have soldiers shooting guns. And it does have some kind of plot to, to hold it all together. But really, it is it is just a reason to put a whole bunch of explosives and soldiers and breakable environments together. Uh, and it treats itself more like a maybe like an action movie than an actual uh, military shooter. Um, which is something I do admire. I do like military shooters when they're done with care. Uh, Criterion Games, you may know them from the Burnout games and the newer Need for Speed games. Uh, they're a really fun developer. And Black is one of their better releases that I never hear anybody talk about. Um, I mean, whenever your first level, in, instead of having you open the door, it has you take a shotgun and shoot down the door. That's uh, that's kind of when you know that, that this game is just up for fun. It is not trying to push some kind of military agenda. It is just trying to have guns and explosives. I mean, this is the kind of thing where, where enemies will be uh, right in front of you and the, they will not be hitting you with their bullets. It is so much fun. It is so much fun to play. Um, you can just run through the game and, and demolish everything. Uh, most most enemies just stand, just stand beside explosives. Uh, they 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 just stand there like they're waiting for you to blow them up, and it's it, it's a lot of fun. And I don't know uh, this game. Why doesn't it get get praised? Why doesn't it get more more, more attention? Uh, you know, with with something this much, you know, with this much love and care, you know, why not? I mean, I know first-person shooters of today like Call of Duty or you know Battlefield and stuff are more multiplayer based but Black doesn't even have multiplayer. Black is a single-player game and it's so good. It is such a good shooter. This game could really benefit from uh, maybe like an HD remake or maybe just a remake in general like a you know like a reimagining kind of like how Criterion Games did with the Need for Speed Most Wanted game they can kind of do with their own game they could do with black that'd be really really cool uh this game should be more popular i'm gonna say it up front now uh the game does look kind of dark and murky but it it fits the 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 secret agent military uh black ops mood very nicely uh you know like i said before i do like military games when they're when, when they're either done with uh care and done o over the top or done with care and done realistically. I am a big fan of the Tom Clancy license and I am also a big fan of a few of the Battlefield games. Uh, Call of Duty, I like some of the older Call of Duty games. The, the newer ones, you might know my take on that. So, you know, Black is something that, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's it's a great military game to come back to, you know, it's a great, a, a great FPS game to come back to and just and just have a lot of fun just ripping through killing enemies and just having a great time i i mean really i i can't recommend this game enough if you like first person shooters you know usually whenever i play a first person shooter it's not a military based one i'll i'll give you that i play a lot of uh like 007 for, uh, fps games and valve fps games but this game really uh I don't know, it, it just it just has something about it that I really, really adore. And I do feel like this should be should be loved more. So yes, I do recommend Black very much. Uh, I mean, whenever your mission says cross the border and I could just run through and blow up trucks, that is the best thing. I mean, who doesn't just want to blow up everything in an action movie type set? You know, just have a fun time. Um, now this game, I don't know, it, it doesn't feel like, um, you know, it's not silly, it's, it's not like a time splitter to where it knows it's over the top and action-y, it feels like it's, it's trying.
to be serious while being over the top and action-y, which makes it feel like some kind of action movie. Because how many action movies do you know that try to feel serious, you know, with a serious plot, but are just over the top explosions and gunfights, you know? I mean, how many movies do that? This game captures that kind of feel, I, I believe, perfectly, you know? So, you know, it's it may not be the best, uh, uh, you know, FPS game of all time, you know? I don't think it's better than, you know, than, like, Bioshock or Red Faction or, you know, a lot of other games, but it is a very, very, very good game. And it's a surprising release from EA, because, you know, EA does have the uh, Battlefield license. And, uh, you know, I never really played much of, was, is it Medal of Honor? Those are the, whatever other war games there are. I never really played a lot of those type of games. Because, honestly, um, I don't like, like, military war settings too much. You know, but I love, but like I said, whenever they're done with care, like this, they are really, really, really good. And really, really, really fun. This is the kind of game that you want to go back to. That you want to go back to and you want to play over and over and over. Just just to see, uh, you know, how how many different ways there are to explode everything. Or how, how you know, how you can get through each level, you know, without, you know, taking damage. Or, go, you know, ma make it through each level, you know, without blowing up anything that's a challenge too just just to bl not blow up stuff that in itself is is kind of challenging <laughs> you know and like i said this game has no multiplayer so if you're looking at this you're like oh great this game looks amazing would you play it you know it does it have two player versus split screen whatever no does it have online no it's a ps2 game and you know even if it had online it wouldn't go now no this game is a strictly a first person solo adventure and uh that's pretty unique also so yes i wish they would bring this game back i wish they would do some kind of update hd remake reboot just whatever just bring black back that's all i want seriously uh this game is so much fun uh just if if my review didn't do it for you watch the old classic game room uh review because that's actually how i figured out uh, well, well, how I found out about this game was back in 2009. I, I watched that review, and uh, I got interested, and I picked up the game. So with that, geeks and gamers, I'll see you guys in my next video. Hey, geeks and gamers. Alex here with another amazing review from Super Hyper Turbo Gamers today. I'm going to review Kirby's Epic Yarn for the Wii. Nintendo is known to experiment with their franchises in very creative ways. Uh, for example, they've turned Zelda into a cartoon. They turned Dreamer, Mario in the paper, and, and this time they've the turned lad, Kirby in the yarn. Like that sort of thing. Lately, there have been rumors of a caped sorcerer going around turning people into yarn. That's right, yarn. One day, Kirby saw his favorite food, a bright red tomato, on top of a bush. Down the hatch. But when Kirby tried to eat it, a Kirby is what well, has always been a primarily is, hey, uh, kid, doing? child, family friendly no, franchise. And this game is no different. Uh, the story Kirby in this game is right Kirby down, is uh, kind of attacked the by this evil go. yarn then emperor guy named Kirby. Yin Yarn who uh, sucks him into his magic sock and. He gets uh, trapped in uh, Patchland, and he meets his new friend, Prince Fluff. And he uh, swears Chris to help Prince funny, Fluff return like Patchland to order and to take down Yin Yarn. And that's it for a story. It's a very basic plot, but that's not why this game's interesting. saw a yarn monster chasing a blue yarn boy. Somebody help me! Kirby tried to swallow the monster up. But the air went right through his body.
Kirby wondered what he should do. Suddenly, Kirby transformed into a car. He drove away with the boy. The game the plays kind of like your normal Kirby game. Apparently, only there's one thing, uh, one, one big difference. Kirby doesn't have his suck abilities anymore. So usually in a Kirby game, you will go around, you'll suck up your enemies, and then you'll copy their abilities to turn into Sword Kirby or to turn into... Uh, ice Kirby, Fire Kirby, you know, same thing, you know, and like all the games. This one takes a different approach, and Kirby's made of yarn. So instead of turning, well, you know, sucking enemies up and copying their abilities, instead he turns into different things. Like if you run really fast, he turns into a car, he turns into a weight. Uh, certain parts of the game, he turns into a penguin, he turns into a uh, fire truck, he turns into, um, uh, I think a drill, he turns into some kind of tank, I don't know, he turns into a bunch of different things throughout the levels at very scripted events. And if you've played, um, say, Yoshi's Island, Yoshi kind of did that also. Now the game is not very tough. It's not very hard. It's, it, there's there's really not a challenge except for the fact that uh, in each level you have to. Well, you're trying to. You don't have to. You're trying to get the best grade from bronze, silver, and gold by collecting as many of these little beads as possible. Now uh, you can't die. There there's there's no no life count, which is fine. You know this game is good for like beginner players, but there is a penalty for getting hurt you lose the beads that you've collected. Kind of like how Sonic loses rings, Kirby loses beads. And it's very interesting, because you're uh, trying to do the best you can with collecting all the beads, and getting the best scores is kind of hard, but uh, you don't need to do that, so it's, uh, it's a pretty fun experience. You know, you can play it however you want to play it. Each level uh, looks like, or the whole game, in fact, looks like some kind of like patchwork. Like, looks like... Um, pants and yarn and fabric everywhere and Kirby can pull the level he can like go inside the level like in the fabric he can change it he can uh, swing on things he can turn the enemies into yarn throw them it's a pretty cool concept everything looks very uh, very scrapbook like and it's very it's a very nice game this game's uh, has a two-player co-op and the second player plays as Prince Fluff which it's pretty much a blue Kirby with a little crown. I actually like Prince Fluff more. And uh, you, you both go around doing the same things. And uh, this is a fun game to play with anybody. Uh, you can play by yourself. It's it's very it's by yourself. It's very uh, relaxing. Uh, it's fun to play with your friends, your family. Uh, I would say uh, if you're a parent, this is a very good game to get your child and play with them because uh, if you don't play many video games. You, yourself, can get into this easily, and if the child's young, they can get to, they can get into this easily. And it's nice to see a release that's um, as colorful as it is creative. Most games these days have, like, gritty backstories and, you know, re tells of revenge and guns everywhere, explosions, you know, and they're mostly getting really stale. I, I'm i getting sick and tired of most gritty action games. Uh, you know, I've, I, I've played my Gears of War games, I've played some Call of Duty, you know. I, I've done all this already, and I'm tired of it. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's kind of refreshing to see a, a game with this much creativity come out uh, you know, within the last five years, you know, it's pretty cool, you know, I, I, I like this. And, uh, apparently they're working on a sequel, I, I'm not sure, uh, yet if the sequel is going to be Kirby, because they've shown pictures of a game called Yarn Yoshi, which is kind of like this, but it's in 3D. And well, it's like a 3D side scroller, and it has Yoshi made of yarn, but he looks like a like like a sock toy almost. So I I don't know if this 
is going to be, uh, uh, well, you know, if that's going to be the, the, the sequel to this, or if they're going to actually do another Kirby's Epic Yarn. I'm not sure. If, if Yarn Yoshi is the sequel to Epic Yarn, I'll be okay with that, because Yoshi's also a very cute character who can fit into this cute universe, you know? It's very, uh, it'd be very cool. I like the music in this game a lot. Uh, it's very, it's all piano. And some of the tracks are very beautiful. Like, uh, the one for the volcano level is, uh, he uses a nice mix of, like, of, like, lower keys and higher keys that have, like, this, uh, very daunting sounding music, but also very happy. So, like, you know, it's all, you know, dangerous because you're in a volcano, obviously. But, you know, so it's like, duh, dun, 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 dun. But then it has, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, like, higher keys that make it sound like, you know, you can do this. You know, you're Kirby. You can, you can do this. And it's very, it's very nice. I like, I like the music a lot, too. So, overall, I think this is a very, very fun game. Now, if you're... Uh, looking for a game with a challenge or uh, a good story, d you know, don't buy this. This isn't what you, you know you want. Go buy something else. Um, you you know, well, if you're looking for that kind of game, you're probably not even on the Wii. But if you're looking for a game with creativity and fun and really good music, I would I would say check this game out, or at least just download the soundtrack. Because I tell you what, you you would like the soundtrack a lot. Uh, I recommend this game to uh, families, uh, children, and uh, gamers that, you know, like this kind of thing. You know, if if you're like me and you like some creative games like this, you know, like this and Little Big Planet and um, other Nintendo-esque games, check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's a very good game. And with that, I will leave you with bye. See you in my next review. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm not done yet. Um, tomorrow, I, I'm going to pick up my copy of GTA 5. Uh, it's, it's been out since Tuesday, but, uh, well, well, I'm recording this on Thursday. I just haven't had the chance to go over and get it, but tomorrow I will be getting GTA 5 and that review will be coming out sometime in the future. I don't know when, so be looking forward to that. And if I don't have any videos up for a while, you know what happened. I got sucked into GTA. So, with that, uh, goodbye, everybody.